Don't we all just love retro games? I mean, like, seriously, man. If you could go back and play the first game you've ever played, wouldn't you want to play it? Like, completely and probably ten times or something like that. Yeah, I happen good. to feel this way about a lot of games that I've played in the past and, and some of the first games that I've ever played. I really love the retro aspect or the nostalgic aspect of said games. Hello everyone, welcome back to another Watermelon Rating. This Wednesday we have Night and Plus, and we're going to keep this video extremely short, not something that I would do on a regular Watermelon Rating one, because this game is kind of small. It's not really a lot to do in this game other than the core aspect of it. And number two, I've got some projects that I think are probably super cool that I'm working on right now that will happen, I mean, I don't know, probably in like a month or so or something. We're, we're working on it. It's okay. So, Night in Plus. This is a retro kind of dungeon crawler game. I would have liked this to be a roguelike game, but I don't think that's what the developers had in mind. It's completely indie, it's like $6, and really, I think you could have a blast in this game if you put enough time into it. I find that this game is just mindless action to me. A lot of it is the same repeated process when you walk from room to room, and you get the same kind of monsters-ish. I think the boss battles, though, are really unique, and I like the boss battles a lot. However, I think that with the stages going from one to the next, it feels like the same thing over and over again, with maybe a new introduction of a mob and then the boss, of course. So there's eight items you can obtain in this game, all have different abilities. I think four they give you as part of the story or the part of, you know, the main game, and then the other four you have to find slash buy slash earn or something. These items will help you through the game. Um, they make a lot of the shit easier and a lot of it more fun, really. Some cool things, like there's a ring that'll trail fire after you dodge. I think that's really cool. This game is also extremely story rich. I like the attention to detail that they have in this game. It's easy to skip by the story of this game with it being so small, but I feel like there's a necessity or there's an urge for me to appreciate that because I really like the story of this game. Well, guys, that would conclude the watermelon reading. Okay, like three minutes or something. That's a world record to me, really. I would give this game a three watermelons out of five, and that's just because I really would have preferred this to be a roguelike game. The game saves like every two stages, or every two stages there's a save pad. Every time you walk through a level, it saves, and every time you complete a boss, it saves. I really wish that aspect would have been like a little more hardcore and a little more like risky for the game. I think that would have made it a lot better. But with that aside, um, I hope to get these projects out in sometime in the near future, working diligently and hard on them. But I think they're going to turn out great. But until then, I'll see you guys next week.